1 Samuel 26. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to give them. That's where Saul lives. Saying, does not David hide himself in the hill that Hakalah, which is before Jeshurun? Here we go again. Someone's telling on David. And Saul arose, went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him. He had then 24 too. For every one of David's men, there are five of Saul's men. I thought Saul had repented. I thought Saul had said, I'll let you go. My son, I'm done chasing you. You're more righteous than I am. Let's make a pact that you will protect my family. And see, Saul has repented, but he never got right. To seek David in the wilderness of Zip. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hecula, which is before Jeshman, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him in the wilderness. There it is again. David is in the wilderness, Saul is traveling, and in the wilderness David sees Saul walking by. But Saul never finds David. Everybody but Saul can find David. David can find Saul. But Saul can't find David. That's God protecting him. David, David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deep. So he's in the woods. Is that Saul? What on earth is he doing here? Come here, man. Go find out that Saul, and I want you to. Why is he here? Because even David's, you know, he repented. Is he out here for me? Is it him? And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of the host, in charge of Saul's army. And Saul laid in the trench. And the people pitched round about him, his army. In the middle of the army is Saul in the trench sleeping. Abner, his, his commander-in-chief of all the military operations, is there asleep. And then answered David and said to Ahimelech, the Hittite, and to Abishai. That's the first time that guy shows up. These are the sons of Zuriah, the brother of Joab. Abishai and Joab are brothers. And they will kill, Joab will kill two men not in war. Abishai will be charged with one of those murders even though he doesn't do nothing. And these two men, Abishai and Joab, give David trouble. Here they're giving him trouble now. It says, Abishai, the son of Zariah, brother to Joab. Now there's Joab. That's the first time he shows up. But it's not really him. It's just mentioned that this is his brother. Joab churns from David and makes another king that's not Solomon. Joab goes against the authority of the government. And when David's mighty men are mentioned, Joab is not even in that list. Though he's in the list like he is here. And it would be this man who was under Joab, this man the armor bearer Joab. But his name to name him is not there. But David's mighty men. He's named, but he's not named. He's only mentioned as Abishai's brother, the son of Zariah. Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So there's Saul, there's the camp. Who's going to go with me? And David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping. Now, believe it or not, that is the first time sleeping shows up in the Bible. And it's Saul. I always thought that was weird. We've gone all through these books of the Bible. That's the first time sleeping. 
within the trench. And his spear stuck, first time that word shows up, in the ground. Now the ground has been cursed because of sin. Here the king of Israel and Judah is asleep in the ground and everybody else is sleeping too. Now watch this. It was stuck in the ground at his bolster. That's a pillow. That's the same thing that Michael took and decorated to make it look like David's face and head. It's a pillow. But Abner and the people laid round about him. Saul. Then said Abishai to David. Here we go. God has delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him. If God has delivered him into your hand, David, why am I asking to slay him? Be my guest, David. I pray thee that with the spear even to the earth at once. I'm going to just give him one shot. I'll go right through his heart. Right into the earth. Or through the kidney. Where, wherever that spear is going to do the damage. I'm going to smite him all the way through his body and he'll go into the ground. And when he says spear, I don't know if it's Abishai's spear or Saul's spear. Remember, David took the, the sword of Goliath and slew Goliath's head right off. There's a man in battle, one David's mighty man. He grabs the guy's own weapon and, and slays him, the Ethiopian. So I would think it would be a complete dishonor in any battle if you were to be killed by your own weapon. And they would know it's your weapon because it would have your identification, your name, something that identified that that was yours. I pray thee with the spear even to the earth at once. I will not smite him the second time. I'm going to do it good the first time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? There's no worthy of death of Saul in our hands. Though Saul tried to kill him two or three times with, with the javelin, David is not at war with Saul. He's just on the run. David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, an oath, that's an oath, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. It's a point that the man wants to die. He's going to die, Abishai, but let God do it, not us. And the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointing. Lord forbid that if I'm the one that kills him, especially while he's asleep. Now again, David's going to have a couple men come, Ishbanish. They're going to slay the man on his bed and bring his head to David. And David's like, that is wicked and that is cruel. You slew the guy on his own bed. Now I'm going to have you slain. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster. This is important. And the cruise, the first time that shows up, of water. That would be like a canteen of water. And let him go. Let us go, excuse me. Now that bolster, again, that's his pillow. Do you know how close they're standing to Saul? Saul has his spear and his water right by his pillow. That is where Saul's head is. David and Abishai are standing right there, and there is Saul's head on his pillow. 
The last time David came up a case like this back in 24, he came close enough to Saul where he could cut off his skirt. Right there. There he is on the ground sleeping. And David could have done anything he wanted to do. But he says, give me that spear and that cruise of water, the canteen. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster. And they got them away. And having the spear there by his pillow, if somebody were to come up and grab it, it would wake Saul up. No. Just watch what God's going to do. And they got them away. Spear in the, in the, in the cruiser water. Okay, let's go. We're out of here. And no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awakened, for they were all asleep, because deep sleep from the Lord was falling upon them. Now this deep sleep shows up a few times in the Bible. Adam is put into a deep sleep. Abram is put into a deep sleep. Saul and his army here are put into a deep sleep. The Bible speaks about the, the, the sloth, slothfulness, puts you in a deep sleep. Israel will be put into a deep sleep. Daniel is in a deep sleep. And Eutychus in the book of Acts is in a deep sleep. Adam, it got him a help me. Abraham, it got him a fellowship and a, a firm of the covenant. Saw in his army, he could have been dead. Slothfulness, it says, you know, you want to be lazy and all that, it's going to get you nothing. It's going to get you death. Israel will be in a time of slubberness, of deep sleep. Daniel, in a deep sleep, and I think this point where Gabriel comes, speaks to him. Eutychus is listening to Paul preach, and he falls asleep, and falls out of the window, and dies. Some people say Adam died. Saul could have died. There's something about that deep sleep. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off so they could see him. He wants to be seen. A great space between, a great space being between them. A safe distance, we call that. And David cried to the people. And after the son there, saying, Answers thou not, Abner? And Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore thou hast thou, yeah. wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? You didn't protect the king. And if you were to put this in leadership like the President of the United States, if somebody were to get close enough to touch the President of the United States, any president, and to possibly do him harm, I guarantee those Secret Service agents would be very great in trouble. Here is what happens. For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, that thy lord. And that was Abishai, verse 8. So David's not lying. Somebody wanted to kill the king. Where were you, Abner? 
You were asleep. You know, there was a time in America and a lot of nations in history, especially during the wars, that if you were caught sleeping on duty, it was a life sentence or it could mean death. And there were sometimes armies that if they caught you asleep, you didn't wake up. Sleeping on duty in the military is a very, very wrong thing to do. And we see with Abishai, he wanted to kill the king. And all the army was asleep. This thing is not good that thou has done, not protecting the king. As the Lord liveth an oath of God, ye are worthy to die, yes. Capital punishment for not protecting the king. Because ye have not kept your master, the king, Saul, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is. And the cruise of water that was at his bolster, at his pillow. Look over to the king and see where his spear and his, his water. And I guarantee he's like looking. Where is it? And Saul knew David's voice. Now Saul finally wakes up. And said, is this thy, vo thy voice, my son David? Son-in-law. David said, it is my voice, my lord, O king. Look at that. Title. Authority. And he said, Wherefore does my Lord thus pursue after his servant? I'm your servant. Why are you doing this? Again, over and over, chapter 24. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him set an offering. Let me run to the tabernacle. Let me run to the temple. Let me go and offer the sacrifice between you and me. And we'll make things right if God is angry with me. But if there be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord. I am out here living in the woods. I am out here living in the wilderness. You are living in the palace. And it's because of you. If I have wronged you, let us get it right with God. If it's because you keep hearing these people turn on me, report where I am, telling you lies about me, then let them be a curse. Because they're speaking evil of me. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. Now that reference runs back to Cain and Abel. The blood of Abel cried out to God from the ground. David knows his Bible. For the king of Israel, Saul, has come out to seek a flea. Back in 2419, this is only two places in the Bible that flea shows up. A little minor thing. And you really got to look for a flea. As when one does hunt a partridge, it's only two places that shows up. The other place is Jeremiah 17.1. In the mountains. King, you are wasting all your time and energy just to try to find me. And when you find the flea, you kill it. When you find a partridge, you kill it. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Uh, the second repentance. Back in 24 he repented. Return my son David. For I will no more do thee harm. Because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. You protected me. You kept me alive when you could have killed me. Behold, I have played the fool. Let me check that one real quick. Right? Let's see. Is that really? That's the first place that fool shows up.
the first fool in the Bible, it's mentioning being played and it's soft with the nonsense he's been doing to David. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. Now it's interesting what we've been reading about David and Saul. They keep mentioning over and over young men. I don't know what that is, but there's something about young men and a young man. And at this point, you wonder, Saul's like, what do you mean? Come get me. Where is, and probably looked over like, yeah, where is my, there's a hole in the ground. Where the spear was, where is it? At that moment, Saul would realize when he sees David holding that spear in the water, that's how close you got to me? And if he remembers back to chapter 24, the last time you were able to cut my skirt. That's close. When David can go up to Saul and say, here's, your, here's a piece of your skirt, that's close. When David says, here's your spear and the cruise of water that was right by your pillow, that is close. What young man come over and fetch it? That young man's gonna be scared. Is it really David's best interest? Is he what's he gonna do to me when I get over there? The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness david is being righteous and saul is not here we go again and his faithfulness that is the first time that word shows up and the reference is to righteousness and the reference is to david and not saul david if he wanted to could have killed saul but he respected god and he respected the authority For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. There you were, Saul. There you were. I could have bent down and slapped you across the face. I could have stepped on you. But, now here's the righteousness and the faithfulness. But I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. Someone else wanted to. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes. Man, you could have died, Saul. And if I'm thinking with Abishai, it could have been by your own spear. So as I have given you life, Saul, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of all, look at that word, tribulation. That's an interesting word referenced in the Jews. Saul is a type of antichrist. David describes his life as tribulation, running from Saul. Remember, I was going to say Saul. Remember the Antichrist is going to get a deadly wound through his right arm, his, his right eye. Somebody's going to give him a wound. David did not give no wounds to Saul. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Now remember, they are speaking where everybody can hear them. This is not in a closet. This is not in a secret place. This is before all the military people. And as what we read was at least 3,000 men. Be Blessed be thou, my son David, son-in-law. Thou shalt both do great things, he will, good and bad. And also shalt thou, uh, and also shalt 
still prevail, he will be king. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. And the second time, Saul could have died, and yet the mercy and grace of David. And David would not have been worthy if he had killed Saul. 